Hey, what's going on everybody? This video, we're gonna be talking about numeric functions, going through some of the most common examples of what you're gonna be running into as a C++ developer. First though, I wanted to say a special thank you to our sponsor, Embarcadero C++ Builder. They have a community edition that you can go get right now for free. It's an IDE that's going to help you build C++ applications. So it's gonna give you all of the tools, including a debugger, user interface development, and integration with databases, all kinds of great tools to help you build and deploy an application, not only to one platform, but four platforms. So that includes Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. So yes, you can deploy to all those platforms from one common C++ code base. Pretty awesome. I'd encourage you to check them out. I'll leave a link for you in the description. Now the first function we're gonna talk about is square root. So you can call it using SQRT and then pass in a number inside of the parentheses as an argument. Now we can output this using C out and I'm also going to do an end to L here. Now when you compile this, it's not gonna work because we actually have to do an include statement. So go up here and put include C math and that's going to give us access to the square root function. Now when we compile, it should work. Awesome. So when we run, we get the value five. So five is the square root of 25. The reason I wanted to start with the square root function is to actually show you guys a special value of the floating point data types. Now, what exactly do I mean? Well, there are special values that you should know about. The first one is not a number. So if we do the square root of a negative number, it's going to produce an imaginary number, which in programming is just represented as NAN, which is short for not a number. So when we compile and run this, we get NAN. So that is one of the special values. The other ones are infinity and negative infinity. So how can we get one of those values? Well, we can actually use the power function, and if we just create a large enough number, it'll be infinity. <laughs> so what we could do is we could take nine and raise that to the 999th power, and this is just going to print inf. And you see it's right there. So this is the second important value that you should know about when it comes to floating point values. We can also have negative infinity. So if we took negative nine, you can see that prints negative infinity down here. And these are actually values that are available through constants. So if we don't wanna calculate them to get the value, we could actually just use the words, not a number in capital letters. And you can see it prints nan. We can also use infinity, the full word, and that gives us inf. And then lastly, we have negative infinity by prefixing it with the negative sign. The next function I wanted to talk about is actually the remainder function. So what this is going to do is it's going to do division and return the remainder. Now, when you study arithmetic operators, which are used to do math, there's one that's going to be called the modulus operator, which is very similar. But the difference is that the modulus operator is always going to give us an integer value. The remainder function can give us a floating point value. So let's go through an example. Let's say we have 10 and we divide that by three. Well, the value we should expect is one because three goes into 10 three times with one left over. And you can see we do in fact get the value one. Now, if you wanted to use the modulus operator, it would look like this, 10 modulus three. Now when we compile and run, we get the same exact value. So the modulus operator will work in some situations, but let's go through an example where it's not going to work. What if we wanted to divide by 3.25 and get the remainder of that? Well, the remainder should be 0.25 because 3.25 goes into 10 three times to give us 9.75 and there's 0.25 left over. Well, but if we compile here, we get an error. In order to do the remainder with a floating point value, we can throw this inside of the remainder function as arguments like so. Now we should expect the value 0.25, and you can see it works. You may also see fmod, which works similar in nature, and in this situation it's going to give us the same value. There are some minor differences between remainder and fmod, but for most cases it's going to do the same thing. It has to do with rounding versus truncation. Check it out if you want to know more details. I'm just going to stick with remainder for now as that's working for me. Now the next function I wanted to talk about is actually called fmax. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us the highest of the arguments passed in here. So in this situation, it's going to give us the value 10. Compile and run, and we get 10. So that can be useful for some simple comparisons. There is also fmin, and in this case we get 3.25. 
You can do this manually with comparisons once we talk about comparison operators, but this is very concise to the point and very easy to read. So if you're just comparing some numbers like this, this should do the trick. There are also a lot of functions used to basically either crop or round a floating point value. So for example, we could do seal, and what this is going to do is going to give us the ceiling. So if we have 3.25, it's going to give us four, and you can see the value here is four. There is also the floor equivalent, which is going to give us the three here. Basically, this will just crop off the decimal values. And you can see we get three. A function that works similar is trunk. And what's going to happen here? Well, actually the same exact thing. We're going to get three. If you want to see the difference between floor and trunk, I'll show you a really simple example. Let's say we have the value negative 1.5. If we truncate this, we get the value negative one. It just crops off the 0.5. If we use the floor function though, let's see what happens. We get the value negative two. So the difference between trunk and floor is only obvious if we're in the negative numbers. Floor is going to lower the value down to negative two, whereas trunk is just going to crop off whatever comes after the decimal. So when we're working with negative numbers, seal is going to give us the same value as trunk. So you can see here, now we're getting negative one. <laughs> So trunk is always going to crop right after the decimal value, ceiling is always going to go up, and floor is always going to go down. The next one I have for you guys is round, and this is going to round the value. In this case, it gives us negative two because we have 0.5 here, but if we had something like 0.49, what's gonna happen is it's gonna give us negative one. So basically what happens, the round function will put it to whatever's closest. Anything under five is going to go to this value, and anything over 0.5 is gonna to go to the next value. So round is basically just going to go to whatever is closest. If we have 0.49, negative one is closest. If we have 0.5, then negative two is considered closest. That's the dividing point. So 0.49 is the equivalent of cropping, but if we have 0.5 or higher, then there will be rounding to the next whole number, which in this case would be negative two. Now there are different types of rounding that are possible. If you wanna look up some of the different types of rounding, I would encourage you to do that. There is another function, nearby int. And this nearby int function can take into account these different types of rounding. So if the standard rounding technique is not enough for you guys, nearby int is the tool for you. Go look that up if you want to do a little bit more research. Overall, I covered some of the basic functions and you should be pretty good, but let me tell you guys, there are a lot of functions. Here is an entire list, <laughs> and you can see it's an overwhelming number of functions. A lot of these do similar things, and some of them are for backwards compatibility with C, so you don't have to worry about all of them. We covered the main ones, including absolute value, remainder, power, seal, floor, trunk, round, and so forth. So yeah, if you wanna know more, you can go to this reference here and read through this, but I think that's probably good for now. With that, I'll see you guys in the next video because we're going to start talking about strings and that's going to be really cool. So I'll see you guys then. Thanks, guys.